Welcome back. This is Game Development with Pygame. This is part 13 of our top-down tile-based shooter. And in this video, we'll be adding obstacles to our tiled map. So the next thing we want to add to our map is we want to add some obstacles, or we want to define the obstacles that are the things we don't want the player to be able to walk through, like this wall here, for example, or maybe the table or the couch. I want to define those and make those walls. To do that, we're going to use a different kind of layer. So you notice we, these are all tile layers that we made to draw the different layers of our map. And when we're on the tile layers, these buttons over here are active, and these ones are not. Well, I'm going to create now an object layer. So I click on New Layer, New Object Layer. And I'm going to name this Obstacles. Okay. Now, when I'm on the uh, when I'm on the object layer, these buttons become active. And what le these let you do is draw objects onto your map. So let's pick the rectangle here, and let's just go out here and draw a rectangle. So I just drew a rectangle, just randomly drew a rectangle, and that's going to be an object. And if I click again, it'll let me draw another one, but I don't want to do that, so I'm going to undo. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on the Select Objects tool. And that's going to be the most useful one. Because that lets you grab an object, move it around, change its size, and so on. Right? Like if I wanted it to occupy one square, I could just make the obstacle that size. And if you notice in the View menu, you can set it to Snap to Grid, which will only allow your obstacles or your objects to be one full grid square, so 64 by 64. Or what I have on is Snap to Fine Grid, which lets me resize it to fractions of the tile size. And that's an, a setting that you can set. But right now it's set to do it in quarters, which is just fine for now. So we could make an object like this for every square that we want to be an obstacle, but that's going to be kind of inefficient. It's going to make a lot of them. So what we could do is we could just make it like that. Right? I could just resize it to fill this, uh, this wall. It'll still be a rectangle. So in our Pi game collisions, we'll still be able to do rectangle collisions. I just saved myself a little bit of time by making it one rectangle instead of a bunch of squares. So now over here, you can see the properties of our object. It tells you the X and the Y of where the object is located. So you can see as I move this around, right, that it changes and if it were all the way up in the corner, right, the X and Y would be zero, zero. And you can also see how wide and how tall it is. So those are going to be useful to define the rectangle in our code. Uh, but we also have these name and type fields. And these are basically things you can use for any any data you want, because we're going to be able to read whatever's in these fields when we read this into our program. So I'm going to click on name here, and I'm going to call this a wall. So now you see the name appears above it. That's why I'm using name instead of type. If I put something, if I left name empty and I put wall in type, um, it's just as useful, but I can't see the label here, and it's kind of nice to know what the object is, because I'm going to have this wall object, and I'm going to copy and paste it, and I'm going to put one over here, and what this one is going to be is just a little square that I'm going to name player, and I'm going to use this for my player spawn point. This is where I want my player to appear. It's right here, centered on this little square of the sidewalk. So I have a wall object now, and I have a player object now. So make sure you save your map. So we have this new layer added in. And then we'll go over to our code and read these layers in and create the objects where they need to be. OK, so we're already reading in the TMX file, the tiled map that we saved. So we're reading that in, and we're now going to have access to that object layer. So all we need to do is down here, just like we were doing previously where we were going through our old 
textile map and looking for ones and m's and p's and we just want to look through the object layer um, of our tile map and look for those named objects the ones named wall and the ones named player so we're going to do and i'm going to leave this uh this commented out here in case you ever want to go back to it you can um, so we're going to do another loop here and we're going to go through we'll call it tile object in the tmx data objects. So the TMX data that we loaded has a list called objects that's going to hold all the objects that we defined in our object layer. And we're going to loop through each one. And we're going to find out what the properties are. And the properties are a dictionary. Okay, and what I mean by that is if we look back at the map real quick, we're going to get each object, we're going to get a dictionary. And for the dictionary key x, it's going to have this value. The key width is going to have this value, and so on. So we'll be able to look for name. We're going to look for x, y, width, and height for the objects that we want to create. But now before we do that, we need to create walls, right? And our wall object that we defined earlier, our wall sprite, uh, doesn't have a width and a height, right? It's just the... 64 by 64 square that we made. Well, I could change this, but again, I'm going to leave this and I'm just going to duplicate it. In case you want to ever use that sprite again, I'm going to leave it there for now. Okay, we're not going to use it. We're going to create, I'm just going to call this an obstacle. Okay, and an obstacle sprite, when we create it, is not even going to be visible. I'm not going to put it in the all sprites group and it's not going to be drawn. It's not going to have it's not going to have an image. Right? It's just going to be an object that we can collide with that's invisibly going to sit on top of the wall. So when we create it, we're going to pass an x, a y, a width and a height. And we're just going to make a rectangle uh, using uh, that x which doesn't want to save there. There we go, the y, the width, and the height. And the rest can stay the same, except, oh, we need to get rid of, we don't need to multiply by tile size because it's going to give us the pixel x and y. So this will be the sprite that we're going to create. It's just a sprite that has a rectangle, so it can do the collisions. All right, so we're just going to spawn one of these obstacle sprites if the object has a property name equals wall. And if it has a property name equals player, well, we'll spawn the player. If we go back over here to main. So all we have to do is look at those values. So if uh, tile object dot name equals player. Did I capitalize it? I didn't capitalize it. So if the tile object name is player, then we're going to spawn the player, right? Self, and then the x will be the tile object dot x, and the y will be the tile object dot y. And I can remove that. And now if we run it, we're going to spawn our player, but we need to make sure we go over here. And again, we don't multiply by tile size anymore because we're going to spawn the player at that location. Okay, so there's my player spawning in the spot I want him to. And then we can just do the same thing if the tile object name is wall. Then what we want to do is we want to add a player. I mean, sorry, an obstacle. We want to add an obstacle. And then each of these properties is just going to be a tile object dot the name of the property. So tile tile object dot x dot y. I'll continue this on the next line since it's kind of long. Tile object dot width and tile object dot height. OK. 
Okay, and that's going to spawn an obstacle where the wall was. So let's run now. Okay, so now, as you can see, I can't go through that wall. So now on your map, you just need to go through and anywhere you want there to be a wall, you're going to create another one of these objects named wall. And the quickest way to do that is just going to be to copy and paste and just make another one size like that. Now what's also nice is, if I zoom back in, we could make this, let's say we wanted to make this bush an obstacle too. So I could come out here and resize it like that. But that's going to make the player clip against this corner here, right? And so what we can do is we can actually make an obstacle that's just that big for the bush. And then the player will look like he gets close to the bush but doesn't can't go through it. Okay. Let's take a look. So now I can get up close to that bush, but I can't go through it. Okay, and now these other wall sections are solid, but I can go through the door. So we can go ahead and do that. We can go through and add walls wherever there need to be walls. And then we can also take and just like we did with the player, we can define a spot here for a zombie to spawn. All we need to do is just name this zombie, and anywhere we find a zombie object, we'll spawn a zombie there. OK, so skipping ahead, um, this is what the map is going to look like once you have filled in all the obstacles everywhere you want there to be a wall or something where the player can't walk. But here's the thing, when we run this, you know, we can try it out and it'll work. Um, the walls are all blocking and the table and everything like that. But I need to be able to see, sometimes when you're troubleshooting, you need to be able to see what you're actually colliding with instead of these invisible objects. And so what we're going to do here is in the new section, we're going to add a flag. Remember, a flag is a variable that can be true or false. We're going to call this draw debug. Okay, and it's going to start out being false. Normally, we don't want it on. But in our events, I'm going to add a key here. And so we're going to use the uh, H key for this. We're not using that for anything else. Let's use H. So if I press the H key, then draw debug equals not draw debug, right? So if it's true, change it to false. If it's false, change it to true. So that way I can toggle back and forth. And now in my draw section, I can just add here, when I go through all the sprites, which is going to be the player and the zombies, if draw debug is on, then I'm going to draw a rectangle. So draw a rectangle on the screen. I'm going to use cyan, and we're just going to use uh, self.camera.apply, because we have to apply the offset to the sprites um, hit rect, right? Because I want to see the hit rectangle of the sprite. And then I also need to say if uh, draw debug is on, then for all the walls, I need to do the same thing, right? I need to look at each of the walls. So let's duplicate this line and I'm going to shift that down to there. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw the, we're going to say apply 
Oops, I just noticed this should be apply rect. Apply rect to the wall dot rect. Okay, and oh, let's just make these. I just want these to be thin rectangles, not filled in. So I'm going to put comma one there for the width. And now if we run this by hitting H, I can see the outlines of all these things. Right? I can just turn that on and off just so that as we move forward and are making sure things work, we can see where things are actually colliding. And all that's left now is to just add one other check here that if we find an object called zombie in the map, we're going to spawn a mob. Dialog.x, dialog.y, and our mob sprite here. Again, get rid of the times tile size. And that way, we should now be spawning everything we need to spawn. There's some zombies, right? They're still colliding with the walls, uh, just like they're supposed to. Still not very smart. Oh, and I just realized when we fire the bullet, it's trying to draw the hit rectangle of the bullet, but bullets don't have a hit rectangle. We didn't add that to the bullet when we spawn them. So let's just do that here. And the hit rect of the bullet is just going to be the same as the rectangle of the bullet. All right, that way we can go over here and hit H and now when we're shooting we can see our Well, it's hard to see the little rectangle around the bullet anyway, but better than getting an error message. All right, that will do it for this video. Um, as always, please like and subscribe. And if you have drawn your own map with the Kenny Game Art tiles here, um, I'd really like to see it. Please share it in the comments below so everybody can see what you've come up with. Um, I'm sure you guys can do even better than my little simple map here that isn't even finished and has all this empty space still waiting to get filled in. All right, and I will see you guys in the next video.